Good evening. Um, as a migrant of African descent, I live in a world of constant social judgment and direct racism to the uh, due to the impact of the media's portrayal of Sudanese youth-related crime in Melbourne. African communities are often portrayed as violent and gang-related. How can we combat this issue, uh, this stereotype, that has nothing to do with my community or even the city I live in? Lakshmi, is that with you? There's a saying in Tamil that goes, Thinal suttapun ullarum, arade navinal suttavadu. And that means that if you have a wound caused by a fire, that will heal in time. But words, le words leave scars. And I think as someone growing in Western Sydney, I have been in a multiracial society. I've grown up with all different kinds of people and I don't feel as though I've really experienced racism in all its forms. But lots of people in our community do. And the, the truth of the matter is that words have impacts, words have effects. We've seen that in Christchurch. Words don't just go nowhere. Hate speech perpetuates and it has consequences. And I think it's so important as a society for us to be cognizant of those kind of impacts of the words that we are putting out there. John Roscombe, I think the way to overcome those stereotypes is to tell the very best stories of, of communities. I'm not sure... Um, what about the idea of actually stopping racist speech, John? Because I know you're a, no, you're a huge advocate of free speech. I am. Speech. I, I think that's a very problematic uh, attempt. Uh, speech that incites violence uh, should be prohibited. Um, but what, what about racist speech? Well, what is the well, violence is is deeper. Well, again, but what is racist speech? Is is speech that is offensive uh, based on race? Should that be unlawful? I don't think so. I think in a free society, to to use the language of Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act, uh, offensive speech and insulting speech is the price we pay for living in a free society. And what concerned me after the tragedy of Christchurch is that now we're having discussion about potential blasphemy laws, about government regulation of the internet. The way to overcome exactly the stereotypes you are talking about is to have a discussion about it and to have it in public and not to push it underground and not to demonise people who think differently. And I think... Can I just, go, just quickly go back to our question, Jordan, if you, you don't have to respond, but uh, what do you think about that argument? That um, See, for me, it's more based on the generalisation that's been uh, portrayed by the media of where it's just the Sudanese minorities and the youth that are actually doing some of these crimes. And then when the media put it out, like Channel 7 and Channel 9, they generalise it in terms of Africans. I mean, I come from Uganda, not Sudan. Um, I've never committed a crime. I've never committed such heinous crimes. Um, I've never partaken in them. But then that same effect, that same um, effect from the Su what the Sudanese youth still impacts me. I, know, I, I completely hear that, but I'd argue the alternative is worse. The alternative of government regulation of that discussion is going to be something that, as I said, is going to drive discussion underground. And Let me just ask Lakshmi what she thinks about that. Absolutely not. Um, <coughs> these words impact people. We have seen that in all shapes and forms. And to say that racist words and racist language cannot be regulated by government, cannot be monitored by a society, I think is just to shrug your shoulders and move away from the issue because you don't have to deal with it. People in our society do, and they're telling you, they're telling our leaders that this is an issue that needs to be addressed because it has consequences. To, sh to shrug your shoulders and walk aside is, I think, taking the easy route. Yep.